Hey guys, what is up? We are coming to you with one last lesson in this series called Known, which is all about our identity in Christ. If you remember the last couple weeks, we've been in Psalm 139, and I really quickly just kind of want to go ahead and dive into that scripture. We're going to be in verses 13 to 15. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. There's this idea that God knows us. He knows us inside and out. We've talked about all those different aspects the last two weeks, but specifically what we want to talk about today is what happens when those outside voices that are not God start to say something about you that is untrue. So let's go ahead and dive into this idea of, uh, of the voices, haters, enemies, whatever it is in your life, it's labels. We talked last week about all the things that we try to achieve and we try to put on, we try to cover ourselves with, whether it's awards, achievements, grades, sports, accolades, knowledge, power, status, all of those things are are fine, but they don't define us and they don't speak anything about our value. What we said last week was that our value comes from God. And because he's eternal, our value is eternal. Like what he says about us as our creator is the truth. It's funny then that we do get so caught up in the things that people say about us that hurt our feelings, that we feel like tear us down. Maybe they're untrue. Maybe they're true. <laughs> And there's a difference. Let me just take a little break here for a second. There's a difference between people saying ugly things towards you that are untrue and ugly and unnecessary and someone speaking something to you, maybe in love, maybe a friend, a family member, maybe it's a pastor, small group leader that says, you need to get better in this area. And it's and it's true. Like So let's not do the 2020, like only God can judge me where we walk around and act like we're fine and, and that nothing's wrong with us. And sometimes we need correction. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about when someone says something to you that is obviously meant to tear you down, these untrue things, these lies that we believe. What happens when those come? I can remember as a high schooler really wanting to fit in. I was the kind of high schooler who really wasn't trying to stand out all that much. I was trying to make sure that everyone liked me. That was my main goal. So if standing out meant that people liked me, awesome. If blending in meant that people liked me, awesome. Those are the things I did. My main goal was to make sure that everyone liked me and no one didn't like me. <laughs> that's it, that's, if you wanna to get to know high school Mark, that's what it was all about. Until I found Jesus, until I found my identity in Christ, I really was putting my identity in what other people thought about. Me. And what that means is, is that I was susceptible to any ugly thing that someone said about me. And I, as a 37 year old, almost 38, can remember vividly the things that people said about me in high school. And we just go ahead and give you a glimpse into what it's like to be an adult. Sometimes these ugly things happen to us and we just never forget. Now, now we learn in scripture that forgiveness is a huge part of the Christian faith and we've been forgiven so we also ought to forgive. It doesn't mean that we forget. I think this whole forgive and forget line is great for rom-coms and coffee cups, but I haven't forgotten some of the things that people have said to me over the course of my life. I probably never will. So let me just go ahead and give you a heads up. Time doesn't heal all wounds that way. So what do we do? How do we deal with it, right? It's devastating in the moment when someone says something about that. Maybe it's rumors going around school. Maybe it's a friend who said something to you that was so hurtful and so surprising because this is a loving, trusting friend, but these words that came out of their mouth obviously were meant to hurt you. The thing that I want to say, this is going to sum up the whole lesson. When you hear things about you that are untrue, it's good to replace those things with things that God said about you that are true. The problem is most teenagers haven't done an in-depth Bible study on what it's like to know your identity in Christ. So let me help you. We're just gonna go to one chapter in the Bible. It's Ephesians chapter one. Those of you who went to the Hub Fall Retreat last year, like it was a whole year ago, might remember this. Uh, that we talked about our identity in Christ back then, but it's always good to be reminded of what God says about us. These are things that God says about you. You can find all of them in Ephesians chapter one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. So these are all like blessings that he's going to share about you. These are, these are like 
points of your identity. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Everything that I'm reading right now, he's saying about believers, okay? So let me just be real clear and real fair right now. He's saying something about people who have chosen to place their faith in him. This is not true of humans. This is true of those who have placed their faith in Jesus, his family. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespass trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and ins insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So that we who were the first to hope in Christ, these are the first generations of uh, first generation Christians, who uh, we might be to the praise of his glory in him. You also, when you heard of the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, you believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. We always say believers have the Holy Spirit walking around with them, and that's the maybe the biggest gift of salvation. It's not the biggest gift. You were saved from your sin. You you're you're a friend of God, your your sin has been paid for. To have a, a companion, a helper, a guide a comforter, one who convicts us and reminds us to get on the right path, like all times, like God with us. He's the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. There's more. I mean, it's all in the Bible, but you've got to know these promises in scripture that are given to those of us who call ourselves Christ followers. You've got to know them because when these people say things about you, which are untrue or hurtful or meant to, meant to tear you down, you need to be able to replace them with things that God said about you. Because why? Because it doesn't matter what that middle school or high school bully says about you. It matters that God who created you, right, and crafted you, like he knew you. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. It's important that you know what he says about you, not what some rando says on a passing day who might forget it five minutes later. You need to be equipped with knowledge about what God, your creator, your savior, your Lord, your king says about you. The best part, the, the the best part of all of this, it's it's extremely good news, is the fact that there's nothing you can do to earn it. And I know you hear that in church all the time. It's like it's a free gift, you can't earn it, and blah blah blah. Like, like zero in on this idea for just a second. There's nothing that you can do to earn it. Meaning you don't have to scratch and claw your way to God's favor and God's love and God's family. It's simply recognizing I'm a sinner. I need a savior. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, died for my my sins in my place on the cross. He lived a perfect life, died a sinless death, rose again three days later, defeating sin and death, and purchased salvation for me in that moment. And all the promises of scripture apply to those who have place their faith in Jesus, but it does take submission. It takes repentance. It takes placing your faith and believing in Jesus. And so my question to you today is, have you placed your faith in Jesus? I want you to, if you haven't placed your faith in Jesus, I want you to understand that nothing of this applies to you. It can. That's the invitation. That's why we do hub student ministry. It's why we do the events, why we do LBS to point you towards Jesus, to guide you to experience life in Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand if you are unwilling to place your faith in Jesus, then, then your identity is in whatever you can achieve. And maybe you're smart, maybe you're athletic, but I want to tell you, at the end of the day, you have a sin problem. And as much as you may enjoy your hundred years on this planet, there's an eternity on the other side of it. Don't be so unwise to think that doing this life on your own is the best choice possible. Just because you see your achievements here on this planet and you can't see with your physical eyes, God, I want you to see with spiritual eyes the truth of scripture, the truth that God loves you so much. So I'm inviting you, those of you who have not placed your faith in Jesus, to do so today. It's it's simple. And I even hesitate to pray a prayer for you to repeat, like I want you to place your faith in Jesus on your own terms. I did it myself in my bedroom with no one leading me because I had been in church for 16 years and I, I knew all this stuff, but it's the raw, real emotion of a 16 year old in his bedroom, I placed my faith in Jesus and I began a relationship. I became a new creation in that moment. And you can too. And, and if I can just say it this way, if you are 
are someone who is placing your faith in Jesus for the very first time right now, I would love to help you. You can reach out to me. My cell phone number, 614-969-8601. You can text me. You can call me. Those of you who are walking through tough times, I want you to be well acquainted with the things that God has said about you that are true because your value comes from a very eternal God and no one can take that away.